Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to your channel, Learn Data Science with Pranjal. So in this knowledge video, we will discuss a very interesting concept that is your ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. So it is a statistical concept. So in this knowledge video, I will show you how to perform the calculation manually in the Excel sheet and then probably we will see the same thing using our Python. So let's get started. So now the question is what is ANOVA? ANOVA stands for your analysis of variance. So before performing ANOVA, the assumptions are that there are three main assumptions we would be making that that is my population is normally distributed. So I've already mentioned the assumptions over here. All these samples are independent of each other. So when you have drawn a sample, when you have created a sample, it does, it does not have any relation, correlation with the next sample or next to next sample. All the samples were independent. There was no relation between them. Mean of the samples are same. Mean of the samples are same. Now let's see what is a null hypothesis in my ANOVA. Null hypothesis in ANOVA is that, that the means are same. So basically what I'm trying to say over here is that means are same. So let's say if I have, if I have three samples, if I have three samples, that is your A, B and C, then the null hypothesis would be that mu A, that is your mean of A is equal to mean of B is equal to mean of C. If I have four sample, let's say there's another sample D, then I'll say mu A equal to mu B equal to mu C equal to mu D. So if this is my null, if this is my null, then the question is what is my alternate? So what would be my HA? My HA would be that any one of them is not same. Or I can say at least one of them is not same. At least one of them is not same. So if I denote this using the relationship, then I can say that let's say mu A is not equal to mu B. and mu b is not equal to your mu c and mu c and where mu is nothing but your mean and mu c is not, not equal to mu d so this is the ideal scenario for your alternate to be valid so this is your ideal scenario for alternate to be valid but alternate can still be valid if i write it something like this so if if i say mu a is equal to mu b and mu b is equal to mu c but if mu c is not equal to mu d, then also my h a would be valid. Then also my h a would be valid. So in both these scenarios, my alternate would be valid. So basically keep one thing in mind that what is the main aim we are trying to achieve using ANOVA? The main aim we are trying to achieve through ANOVA is that we want to check whether the samples have been drawn from the same larger population. If the samples have been drawn from the same larger population, then their means would be same. So keep one thing in mind. Let's say if I if I if we are doing the survey on the incomes of the Indian, then let's say the person A goes and does the survey, the person B goes and does the survey, person C does the survey, and person D does the survey. If they are doing the survey on the Indians, then probably their means would be probably same. Even if the person A, B, C, D, they do not know each other, their means would be around same because their larger population was same. Their larger population was still the Indians. But let's say if the person A does the survey on the country India and the B does on country US and C does on China and D does on some another country, then their probably means would not be same because their larger population was not same. So to find out if they have been drawn from the same larger population, we'd go for a ANOVA. I have already created one example in my Excel sheet. Let's try understanding it, how ANOVA actually works, and then we'll see how to use it in our, uh, with our Python or in. So in interest of saving the time, what I've done is I've already created a scenario. So let's say I want to compare the lifetime of four electricity bulbs. So this is my problem statement. I want to compare if the four different brands of the bulb, do they have the same average life? So here A, B, C, and D are the four different brands of the bulb, electric bulb. And I have taken a sample. So 20, 19, and 21 are the sample, is the sample for A. 25, 23, 21 is the sample for B. So this thing. 
So over here I have marked as original data for the more clarity. Then what I will do, I will find the mean of column A, mean of column B, mean of column C, mean of column D. Okay. So, so now what I have done is I am finding the mean of A, mean of B, mean of C and mean of D. So 20 is mean of A, mu A. Mu B is 23, mu C is 22 and mu D is 21. So if you want, you can just find it out also. And then what is the grand mean? So grand mean is nothing but this portion, which let's say I am marking in yellow. So if I consider all these numbers, which I have marked in yellow, if I take the mean of them, then I'll get the answer as 21.5. Right? So this is my original data. And now I, again, I'll change back this color so that it doesn't confuse us. So that's why I have written it as my step one. I have written as step one, and then I'm moving to my step two. In step two, what I'm doing, I'm taking the difference between the mean of the various sample and squaring it. So I'm saying mu A minus mu X. So 20 minus 21.5. So 21.5 is nothing but your grand mean. And in my sample, I was having three records. So I have to repeat this process three times. So 20 minus 21.5, then 20 minus 21.5, 20 minus 21.5. And in column J, what I'm doing, I'm saying, I'm taking the square of it. So column J is nothing but the square of column I. So 20 minus 21.5 is your 1.25, sorry, it's 1.5. And if you take the square of 1.5, it is 2.25. Same thing I will do with my column K. So over here I've written also mu B minus mu X. So you can already see what is mu B. Mu B is nothing but 23 and mu X is 21.5. So 23 minus 21.5 is 1.5. And in column L, I have taken the square so that is your 2.25 and then what i'm doing i'm doing repeating the same thing for my column c mu c minus mu x so you can already see what is mu c mu c is 22 and mu x is 21.5 so 22 minus 21.5 and repeat it for three times why because we have three records and then you take the square same thing with my column with column D, we, I can say, or you can say with bulb D, mu D minus mu X. So mu D is nothing but your 21 and 21 minus 5, so 0.25 and then square. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking the square. So this highlighted portion, which I have over here, 6.75 is nothing but the summation of column J. Similarly, again, this 6.75 is nothing but your summation of column L. And 0.75 is nothing but summation of column N. And 0.75 is your summation of column B. So if I add 6.75, 6 6.75, 0 0.75, and 0 0.75, then I'll get a sum of square. That is my SSC. SSC. So SSC is nothing but your 15. And that's what you can see it also. I have, I have said J7, sum of J7, L7, N7, and P7. So that is nothing but your 15. So this is sum of square of the various samples. Now what I'll do is I will take the variance between the sample. So I'll follow the, it is almost similar, but with a slight change. The difference between step number two and step number three. So th th that was step number two. Now I'm coming to the step number three. So the difference between step number two and step number three is that in step number two, I was subtracting the mu X. Over here, I would be subtracting the mu A. So I'll say A minus mu A. So what was A? A is nothing but 20, 19, and 21. And mu A is your 20. So I'll say 20 minus 20, 19 minus 20, and 20 minus 20, and then you take the square. So column U is nothing but square of column T. So that is how your square is coming. And then what I'll do, I'll apply the same logic for column B also. So let me repeat what I've done for column B. So 25 minus 23, why 25 minus 23? Because 25 is nothing but your first record, first entry, and 23 is your mu B. So I'll find that difference, and then I'll take the square. Same thing with my, I'll repeat it with my column C and column D. And then I will take the sum of the square. So this two is nothing but the summation of column U, 9 is summation of column W, 8 is summation of column Y, and 6 is summation of this column AA. 
so if i add these numbers 8 plus 9 plus 2 sorry if i add these numbers 2 plus 9 plus 8 plus 6 so i get my sse sum square error so this is within this is between the samples this is between the samples sum of square within so this is within the samples 2 plus 9 plus 8 plus 6 so this becomes my step number 3 now i will create a one grand table i'll create one grand table what i'm doing i'm saying source of variation between sample and within the sample sum of square ssc what was ssc we already know ssc ssc was nothing but your 15 this was your 15 right and then i'm finding 25 25 already told you from where we are getting this 25 and then degree of freedom so degree of freedom is nothing but how much freedom you have so let me explain degree of freedom in a way. so let me explain the degree of freedom let's say if i have a variable a plus b plus c plus d plus e equal to 50 okay so a b c d e are the real numbers they can take any value so let me randomly assign and mark my word i am saying randomly so let's say i assign a as 20 i can assign b as let's say 10 then let me randomly assign c as let's say 20 and let me randomly assign e as 30 now i cannot randomly assign any value to e i cannot assign any value randomly to e because a plus b plus c plus d plus e has to be 50 the now the value of e has to be minus 30 now the value of e has to be minus 30 because this constraint a plus b plus c plus d plus e has to be 50 so over here the number of variables were 5 over here the number of variables were 5 but my degree of freedom was 4 so degree of freedom basically represents how many variables at a time the user or the researcher can control so that's what your degree of freedom is so now you have got the meaning of dof let's again go back to our excel sheet so i will calculate the degree of freedom separately for both of them between the sample and within the sample so degree of freedom over here would be c minus 1 so what is c c is number of columns so if you check there are four columns column a column b column c column d each column for one bulk minus 1 that is your 3 and what would be d2 d2 is nothing but number of records minus number of columns so number of records are 12 in the original data so if you check this table you will have 12 records 4 into 3 that is your 12 12 minus 4 is 8 so degree of freedom is your 8 so let's move to the next column mean sum of square so this is the standard formula msc equal to ssc upon c minus 1 so c minus 1 is all so i am saying ssc upon c minus 1 or instead of saying c minus 1 you can say d1 so 15 divided by 3 that is your 5 and msc is 25 divided by 8 that is your 3.125 now what we are doing i am saying f equal to ms then what i am doing i am calculating my f ratio so f ratio is nothing but your msc divided by mse that is your 5 divided by 3.125 and the final answer comes to be 1.6 so over here i have also written the notations what each ssc sse msc mse stands for so you can just uh, read, uh, read, uh, read through it and now remember my main aim is the final conclusion would be whether i reject my null or whether i should accept my null or whether i reject my null or i or i fail to reject the null so that one part is still missing so till this point what we have done is we have got the calculated value but this calculated value has to be compared with the given value right and and this test is also a kind of right tail test so right tail test in a sense means that if my calculated value is more than the given value or you can say the tabulated value then only i will reject the null so now let's see what is our tabulated value so for seeing the tabulated value it's very easy just go to go to the google and say f distribution table and in f distribution table you have to check the table 
on your x axis also and and on your y axis also so on the x axis you will see the degree of freedom 3 and on y axis you will see the degree of freedom as 8 so i have already taken the snippet of it let's look so i have already taken a snippet of it so on the x axis i will see the degree of freedom 3 so this is my 3 and this is my 8 so this value 4.066 this is my 4.066 so 4.066 is my given value this is my given value and i will compare it with my calculated value so if we are considering it to be a right tail test class then what will happen is this 4.66 or 4.066 rather would be somewhere over here and my calculated value calculated value is somewhere around so calculated value is 1.66 and we know that this is a kind of my right tail test so in right tail test the critical region is on my right hand side so this red portion which i uh, which i am marking this would be taken as my critical region but over here the value is not falling in the critical region it is falling in the region of acceptance so this green portion which i am marking would be taken as my region of acceptance so this is whole region of acceptance right so the value is in region of acceptance if the value is in region of acceptance then we do not reject the null we fail to reject the null or we say that our null is still valid and if null is valid it means there is no significance difference between the population mean it means in this scenario the average or the mean life of the bulbs are same irrespective of which brand they belong to so that's the final conclusion now let's quickly see the same thing in our python so in interest of saving the time what i have done is i have already written a certain piece of code which you can easily see so uh, at line number 5 what i have done i have created a data frame bulb live i am saying pd dot data frame and it contains the exactly same data a b c d are the my column names and you have the same values 20 19 21 all those things and you can see the output a b c d and then from scipy dot starts import f one way anova this is one way anova i am doing so f one way anova and then i am passing my four different columns so bulb a bulb b bulb c and bulb d and if you check this start value so this start value is again 1.666666 the same value which we have got in a excel sheet we have done it manually we have also got 1.6 over here also it's giving me the same value and but since we are using the software we need not check for the tabulated value we can make the decision based upon our p value so the p value is 0.25032 which is much more than 0.05 and we know that if the value is more than 0.05 we do not reject the null because 0.05 represents your error percentage so over here also from uh, python also we get the same conclusion right so in this excel sheet basically what when we have done the calculation we have seen the a little longer way but this is the actually i'll say it's a longer but then it's a simplest way there is one more way to do your anova so let me know if you uh, in the comment section just mention if you want to see the shortcut method for finding the nova and uh, then probably i'll uh, create another video for find, uh, the shortcut method for anova and there is also the two way anova let me know uh, guys if you want to see how to perform the two way anova but as of now uh, i hope people would have enjoyed this video uh, and if you have enjoyed the video please go ahead and like it and share it with this i will end the video thank you everyone one for watching the video hope to see you soon in my next video till that time happy learning